Good afternoon. My name is John Gunderson. A few weeks ago, I did a video for RVET. I've been pleasantly surprised by the number of hits. This is a surprise for an old guy who doesn't follow social media. So today I'd like to answer a few questions and comments that have been brought up by some of the followers. The first one is many said, well, Donald Trump's not a perfect guy, he's no saint, but you've got to separate his personality from his policies. Well, can you? Well, here's a guy who has lived a life, who has treated people in a certain way, who has had divisive rhetoric throughout his three and a half years tenure, who has disdained science and experts and institutions who has a growing authoritarianism in the way he treats people and institutions, and who has lacked grace and empathy throughout his career. So what does this mean? It affects everything. Think of COVID-19, what's happened in the United States of America. First, Donald Trump called it a hoax, a Chinese thing. He played up to Chairman Xi in China saying, well, you did a great job, transparency. Then he reacted late. He closed down our economy for a short time. He opened up too early. What's happened? 185,000 fellow Americans have died, more than any other country in the world per capita or in absolute numbers. What's happened to the economy? The economy is tanked. We have more unemployed today than we had at any time since the Great Depression. Even at the peak of the Trump economy, we have a growing deficit and debt. That means your children, your grandchildren will have to pay for this. Now, Donald Trump has a big ceremony at the Republican convention where people are sitting shoulder to shoulder, no mask. What example is that to others in the society who have to live in, through COVID-19? Internationally, his, the United States is at a low point in terms of popularity, respect. It, this means allies don't share intelligence, don't work with us. Enemies disregard us. For example, Putin does what he wants. He poisons the opposition figures. He threatens Belarus. Donald Trump is silent. You think Ronald Reagan would be silent in such a way? Another example, Iran. We spent 10 years building up sanctions against the Iranian regime. We've got a UN Security Council resolution supported by our allies, even China and Russia, putting on sanctions. Trump comes in, goes out of the nuclear deal, which limited uh, nuclear capability. Try, we tried to get sanctions last week, renewed and extended. Every one of our allies, including the Russians and Chinese, of course, voted against us. So we're isolated in the world. So we have, of course, we see every day, racial divisions, economic disparities, that is just becoming exacerbated under Donald Trump. Think of institutions, even the post office he goes after. I remember as a young Republican in college, an office holder, I used to say, well, it's the far left that attacked our institutions, like the weathermen, like uh, SDS. They attacked the establishment, the press, the FBI, the intelligence community, the military. Who does this now? Why? Why is Donald Trump attacking these institutions, even the post office? I mean, he should be for the post office. It delivers mail to rural America. It, it takes care of prescriptions for the elderly. It takes care of the military. That should be Donald Trump's national constituency. I remember in 1968-69, the highlight of my week in Vietnam was with that big chopper that Chinook would come in with the mail. You know, now we, we have friendly things about Cliff sitting there in chairs or Newman harassing Jerry. Those are images. But Donald Trump attacks these institutions, the FBI, intelligence, all these ones. Why? Without institutions, even flawed institutions, that's the glue of society. And without them, chaos and anarchy. And strong men in history have always wanted chaos and anarchy. Even Trump's press secretary says, this helps us with chaos and anarchy. So why do I support Joe Biden? And I do. One, I think he's a pragmatic, progressive politician. He's worked across the aisle with principal Republicans. I expect them to do so. I'm going to disagree with him. I'm going to be very open. 
And after he wins the election, I'll be saying when I do disagree. He's not a socialist. I mean, Trump has no idea what socialism is. I was in the Soviet Union for four years and two tours of duty. I know what command socialism is, was a strong dictatorial leader. What Trump is, is a crony capitalist. He gives, he praises certain industries that he likes, like Goya or My Pillow. He condemns ones he doesn't like, like Amazon or Goodyear. That's command capitalism. That's crony capitalism. So what to do? Well, the party of Lincoln, Eisenhower, Reagan, would that party justify somebody saying that Mexicans are rapists, that white supremacists are good people? These conspiracy theories like QAnon, no, they would not. Uh, a friend of mine, Ann Applebaum, wrote a book, Twilight of Democracy. And in this book, she talked about those who collaborated with Nazi and communist regimes. Some of them were even good people. They just didn't want to be harmed by saying something. How about today in, in the Republican Party? If you go against the president, yeah, you may have some effect. You may have a primary opponent. You may lose a primary. So what? You'll get a good job. You'll work with cable news. You'll get a job with a, uh, with a K Street lobbyist. You're not going to be sent to the gulag or a concentration camp. So I tell my Republican colleagues and my office holders, grow a pair. So on November 3rd, I urge you to vote for Joseph Biden. Send, vote in person, vote by mail. If you vote by mail, send that little card to the current occupant of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, a change of address slip. Get this little small man and send them to the dustbin of history. Thank you very much for your indulgence.